please welcome the third member of the Erdl family we've had on, Jake Erdl. How's it going? I'm good. How are you, boys? Good We're doing well. We're doing well. I was just going to say this before, but it's good to say it on the pod. Yesterday was the championship game between Canada and the U.S. That was a disappointment. What do you guys have to say about that? I mean, uh, the boys played hard all tournament. It was just kind of a disappointing uh, outcome. I mean, mm -hmm. they were working hard, but I feel just like the U.S. was a better team and, uh, you know, they produced more. And you got Caulfield, Turcotte, Zegers, all those gross guys. So sure. it's kind of hard when two out of those three guys put up points. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. Unlucky game for Levi, but I think, uh, I mean, they blew them out the first period, so they definitely set the tone. And then by the time it was third third period, they were just playing emotionally. So that's what I took from it. But the garbage can thing, so I didn't even notice they, they took that when I was watching it. It must have been a... Well, it, they took it like after. After everything. It, was later. Yeah. it wasn't their first team picture. It was like later, which is... Wait, what was we that? Had, we had this conversation with Cooper Walker too. Um, they just needed a bounce. I just want to put my... They just needed one bounce. They had a couple posts. And, yeah. But so... Uh, like the Byram, yeah, the Byram post, and they were all, they were all over him. The third was just too late, but so Keith, like they did their big picture of the team, and then later they brought a barrel. Barrel, they say it's a barrel, but it looks like a garbage mm -hmm. can. Yeah, but maybe technically it's a barrel, and they put Team Canada's logo on it, and their whole team took a picture with it beside them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah so like in the interviews they just claimed they said it was like a barrel and they just do it after the games but like i think i don't know i don't know i won't put too much into it but i don't know it didn't yeah, look good pretty, for me i think it's pretty i thought it was pretty gutty yeah yeah I, mean, I think it was a little much like you already come out with the win and stuff i i just don't see a need for that yeah yeah sure. yeah. yeah i yeah all right yeah. Pretty sad, but I felt really bad for Byron. That's too. I want to throw that in. Yeah, I don't know. Horrible. I didn't mm. feel. I don't know. I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but I felt bad for them. Obviously, but I like. I would have felt for the bad for the U.S. too. Like, yeah. oh yeah. I don't like. So I would have felt bad regardless. But Byron, like Byron, when he was telling Nate when he got his player of the game thing, and like he knew the camera was on him, he and he like was crying. I felt so bad for him. Like, yeah. oh, I know. That's such like you're cr like imagine like you're crying and you know like a couple million people are like about to zoom in on you on TV. Like he just put <laughs> his glove over his face and like turned to cousins. I think it was but, like that's it's got to be such a bad feeling. Yeah. Okay, so, oh yeah, we'll change up the mood a little bit after I'm getting sad thinking about Byron. <laughs> uh, so we'll hit him. We'll hit uh, Jake with a five hundred nine speed round. Oh, yeah. uh, Assuming you you know what it is, is questions right after each other. Uh, I'm hoping to do better than Justin. That's all. No, <laughs> oh yeah, for Justin's to be honest. Yeah, well, I think anyone. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be better than Justin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Keith. All right. So yeah, so Nate and Keith will take it away in a second, and just as fast as you can. Yeah. Okay, I'll start off. If you go anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? Australia. I guess not right now. Yeah, when COVID, 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 COVID. Yeah, COVID excluded Australia. Know, that's pretty they, sick. They got like normal life back in Australia now, or is that New Zealand? New Zealand. Oh yeah, yeah New Zealand. But it's, if you go to Australia or New Zealand, you can't. They, it's not like a. You have to quarantine for fourteen days. You have to stay in a government hotel for fourteen days. Yeah, it's pretty strict. But so you, so you can't break quarantine, but it's worked. So yeah, mm -hmm. well. good place. Good place. Oh, All right, uh, go to cheat meal. Gmail, uh, Noki, Noki with queso. Oh, okay, all right. Whoa, I'm gonna try it. interesting. That's all I'm saying. Uh, McDavid or Crosby? Crosby. Uh, dog or cat person? Dog. If you were pushed into a dance circle, what move would you bust out? Oh, I'd probably hit like the cringe whip, like the cringe white kid whip, that thing. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Sure. Uh, Damage straight, please. <laughs> oh, uh, <he's> not <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh go to not hype song. Sorry. Uh go to hype song. Hype song? Ooh. I like Antidote by uh, Travis Scott. Oh, okay, yeah. That's always good. Yeah. Favorite movie? Movie. Oh boy. Um I know that's a tough question. Oh, that's on the spot, boys. Uh probably Mighty Ducks. I like Mighty Ducks a lot. Or Slapshot. <laughs> okay. Classic. Yeah. Uh, this one might be hard, but what were you for Halloween last year? Like not COVID? Yeah, yeah. I get like just remember like your last. That's kind of a tough question. Oh 
Oh, geez. I honestly think I stayed in. I yeah. think I stayed in. I know. I'm, I'm not that fun. I get it. <laughs> respectable, respectable. In a movie about your life, who would play you? Oh, wow. Uh, I'd say, uh, like, Matthew McConaughey thing. Kind of from, like, Days and Confused. That kind all of right, thing. All right, all right. Okay, yeah. Good answer. Uh, what's your favorite uh, TV show to binge? Ooh, I've been a... What is it? I'm more of a movie guy, honestly. Okay. Oh, you know, I'm I, a TV guy, 100%. I used to watch uh, 13 Reasons Why, but I, I like Friends right now. Friends is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Friends is always safe. Oh, uh, classic. Yeah. Um, What can you cook the best? Man, no game with queso. <laughs> oh, there we yeah. go. It's coming uh, back. After the boys over, we'll make a lot of gnocchi and queso. We got to try it. Um, I'm in. I got to try this. Window or aisle seat on the plane? Window. Like the view. All right. Second last question. Favorite animal? Favorite animal? Uh, I'm going to say a tiger. Tiger? All right. Last okay, that's, that's pretty manly, not like a squirrel. Last question. <laughs> <Last. laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All right. Oh, yeah. Never going to let that up. <laughs> All right, Nate, kick that last one off. Last question to throw you off a little bit. Uh, which, what color toothbrush do you ask for when you go to the dentist? I, I'm more of like a purple pink guy. I like. I feel like pink is a manly color. Yeah, I think all right. There we go. Some respectful think, answers. That's what there. Matt thought too before he got chirped by Scott Walker. Hey, don't get ripped on by Scotty like that, eh? <laughs> yeah. you the, hey, I never yeah. hold up that down. It hurts a lot, but more. <laughs> You'll get through it, though. You got to go see therapy or something. Yeah, he still he still said he's coming back on and stuff, so it's okay. I just don't think I don't think I'm gonna attack the interview. Well, Nate and Keith will run it. Yeah. When we golf yeah, with I, him, you have to wear a pink shirt. Pink golf. I'm gonna shirt. wear it again. I'm gonna wear it again for sure. I have to now, like, yeah, like to, yeah, in our highlight video and stuff. So might as well. You gotta say when we do the charged up open, you gotta wear a pink shirt. Then. Oh, I should wear that shirt to the charged up open. <laughs> that would be funny. funny. We'll, we'll take a little time. We, we don't need to. We, we'll get through everything. Um, thanks for everyone. We got our most views on our YouTube channel so far. We, we got over 300 on our best charged up clips 2020. So thanks yeah. so much for everyone. Congrats. That was pretty awesome. Congrats. Me and Nate are like, and I, I don't know, probably Keith too. I just haven't talked to Keith as much. Or like, I'm checking it like every couple hours and it's been like four days. Yeah, I have. Constantly going up. So it's been awesome. Um, let's talk about what's going on in the States right now. You guys know what's going on right now? Oh yeah, man. It's yeah, not- I was, yeah, I'm looking at it. Like I literally, before the podcast, what's, I had it on the TV what's and going on? like, it's crazy. It's like a revolution going on. Yeah. It's just, that's scary stuff, man. Yeah. They were saying a woman's already got shot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're How in the not, build. Like, like, I don't understand. Yeah, like, you saw, you can see videos like they're literally rushing the building. Like, that's so, yeah, that's, that's so scary. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't want to get too political because I know I could definitely dive into this, but like, yeah, Americans would never listen to our podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, it's it's so ridiculous. Yeah, you should yeah. Just, and like how they let that happen. Yeah, you should just tag Trump. I don't know. What's this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I I just can't. Pull, I don't know. I don't want to trash people. Like I I don't know how you get so into politics and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I don't know. I guess yeah. it affects more people like than what most of us realize. I feel like we're all pretty I don't want to say privileged, but right, we like for people who struggle, I'm sure it affects them a lot more in the states and stuff. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. different down but, there. For sure. Yeah. I don't know. We'll get into the hockey now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll change we'll jump in. <laughs> all right, who's kicking it off? So here? It off Matt? Yeah, so what what's going on right now? I, I wanted you to share your two. I know you're working and I don't know what's going on with the lockdown, but I wanted you to share about your, your personal valet job, too. It's pretty sick over the summer. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Did the Biggers tell you about that or what? You told me about that. <laughs> Dude, my memory, memory is horrible. <laughs> Sorry, I guess you don't share our conversations as much as I do. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm doing, like, I'm kind of like a real estate assistant right now. I'm kind of doing that to pass the time. Oh, that's cool. He's a driver. Uh, quote, unquote. I love him, Mules um that and when we're not in lockdown i'm helping bigger with a few skates uh he wants me to start running some myself which is kind of a little stressful um hockey kind of at a pause right now i think you you boys know that too so i'm mm-hmm. really trying to get the hopes up they say we're starting february 1st but uh it's not looking too good it's been delayed so many times 
Oh, yeah. oh it's not happening February 1st. We're going to be in lockdown, bro. We're still... Yeah, because yeah, like, uh, I think water, like where I'm at, like Waterloo Region, we had like 200 and something cases today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the whole the whole province is still... It won't get better for a couple weeks at least still. So. Yeah, and then we got that new strain. Like, uh, I don't know if you boys heard about that, like new strain. Yeah, yeah, I did. I don't know if mention it anymore. That's nice. Yeah. Other than that, boys, it's, uh, it's just a lot of COD. COD and sports. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, relatable. You got chill? Do I have chill? I actually do. I think I do have chill. Oh, we'll have to get you on I guess the you... ESHL. We just did a video with uh, Cooper Walker today. Oh, I got to get some practice, when I haven't played chill in a few years, though. Sounds good. Hey, me and Nate aren't that good, too. We just grind it out, though. We get the win somehow. <laughs> you know, I'm a dump and chase specialist. Come on, Mills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we like those plays. Exactly. Keep it simple. <laughs> so we'll go into recent news. Obviously, um, uh, you moving over to Paris, even though you haven't really. I don't even know if you guys have practiced at all yet because it just keeps getting pushed back. But how pumped are you to go there? And I've told you, it's like awesome there. You get spoiled, and everyone's so awesome there. So how pumped are you for that team? And you guys are gonna be awesome. Yeah, like uh, it was nice to you know go to Paris with a few of the boys already from that uh, air. So it makes the transition a little easier, but uh, I'm excited to meet the new guys. And as Mules like pointed to it, like I talked to him about it when we were skating with my dad. Um, he told me a lot of good things. Told me a lot of good things about Ty and uh, Todd. So really excited to get it going. We haven't practiced yet, which is kind of tough because yeah. I'm excited to meet the boys. Um, Mules can probably tell me about a bit the boys later, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, nothing but. Well, you listen. Did you did you listen to Brez's podcast or see the clips of the year? Brez's uh, legend year. I haven't uh, looked at Brez's uh, podcast yet. Oh, I'll listen! Give, listen to Brez's podcast before you start skating in Paris, man. We got some good stories. I won't even spoil them for you. You, you, <laughs> you, were, telling, funny. you were telling. Oh, I, you I should listen to Brez's podcast because that was funny. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do, Mills. You want more views? I get it. I'll, I'll give you the views. <laughs> yeah, right. we need that one on Brez's podcast, please. <laughs> Go check it out on YouTube, though. Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> right, no, give Brez's a list of video. He's hilarious. We're getting Borges is on to Borges on tomorrow, I think, too. Oh, really? Yep, Borges will come on. So we don't. We'll talk about Paris a little bit at the end too, but we'll go right to the start. Obviously, growing up in Kitchener and. Um, I don't know how you guys did every year, but it seemed like off elite prospects. You had quite a good team growing up. Yeah, so uh, my my first year of AAA was minor midget. Um, before that, I played like uh, single A, double A kind of things. Yeah. Um, minor midget was a great season. Obviously, you know some of the boys that you know went on to the next level, like uh, McCombs, uh, Schwinney. I don't really know who else. Uh, Chris Atlas, like all those boys, Eric Malpe, like they're all doing good right now. Like oh, yeah. McKay. Yeah, yeah, McKay. Like McKay, McKay's a real good guy. Uh, always like, you know, coming from the Sioux, a little tough transition, but he's a real good guy in the dressing room, you know, pushes the guys in practice, like all that kind of things. And I thought we were just a real tight team and uh Dean taught us a lot. He was a real good coach. Um and yeah, like he just the things he taught us even in life like just life things like when we did the bonding thing at the start of the year because we didn't really know a lot of this but uh yeah great experience especially for my first season as a triple a player like couldn't have asked for a better start yeah that's awesome and you're not not drafted were you expecting to be drafted to the OA or to the ohi and was the ohl ohl yeah they couldn't assume oh, it was God. the OHL. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I'm so... It's, okay, wait, it's literally just O H and then a lowercase L. <laughs> dude, I talk about the OHL every episode. I'm, I've am i been staring at screens for so long. I gotta I gotta stop with everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> such a doofus. Um, all right, I'm going to re-ask that question. Okay, all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... So not drafted, were you expecting to be drafted to the OHL and was the OHL your first choice? Uh, I was never expected to get drafted. Hey, you better leave that in though. Yeah, you better. What? Where you, where you studied or you messed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll... Uh, you gotta leave that in. I'll bloopers. figure that out. Bloopers, 2021 bloopers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, like I, I never expected to get drafted. Uh, I was more fascinated with the NCAA route. Yeah. Um, just with I was more of a school kid. I liked school. Um, also, I was a late bloomer, so I also heard like that that's a better road for late bloomers and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, like I've always wanted to go to Division One. Obviously, as you can see, I did not go to Division One, but it was it was the right mindset and it kept me pushing. And you know, there's always that aspect on okay, like there's still a chance that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so that's yeah. my two cents on it for sure. Yeah, I think your brother was like Matt's, that too. Matt's trying to go the NCAA route too, or that's what his hopes are too. No, oh. yeah, it's a good route, honestly. Especially like Mules, like Mules. Did you say you're a late bloomer? Oh yeah, for sure. That's why. That's why it's the road I want to take. Yeah, exactly. So honestly, like kids, like the thing that like isn't stressed enough, especially in Ontario and like you know, like OHL, our minor hockey. Like we're we're always taught, and I know Mules can back me up on this. Is like it's literally just the OHL. Like, that's all we're taught in the OHL. And then if you don't go, you're kind of done or go junior B, whatever. Yeah. But one thing, like, kids need to, like, start looking at is even if you do or don't get drafted, there still is that other path. Like, you can still go OHL, but you can also still go to, like, get your schooling, walk out with a diploma, still play hockey, make lifelong friends there. Yeah, I like that view for sure. So, and a lot of we've had a lot of really good guests uh, who've done the NCAA route and gone pro and like have been super successful. Yeah. So it's like definitely possible. Yeah, and like also NCAA, right? You're playing against older guys. Like OHL, it's 16 and what 20 year olds. Yeah, and yeah, really. Young NCAA old. is 18 to 22, I believe. 24 or five, I think. 24. 24. Yeah, because you don't have to play your freshman year until you're 20. Yeah, so 20... Yeah, three years. Uh, yeah, anywhere from 18 to 25, right? So you're playing against grown men. You have that better exposure, especially when NHL teams are looking at you, right? You just got to look at, like, a lot of kids don't look at that side of the story, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you definitely got to know who... You, excuse me, who you are, too, right? Like, uh, this, isn't even, this is regardless of me, right? Like, if you look at the States players, they're, like, under... They're, like, a point in game, maybe. Half their team's under a point in game in the NCAA versus, like, OHL... WHL, you're scoring like the best players have to be scoring. Like, if you want to be a top player, you got to score like 100 points. Like, of course, yeah. So, it's it's different. So, it, yeah, it's, you def- definitely got to know who you are and where you want to go. But that's a good good perspective to bring up because we don't talk about that enough. Yeah. 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 It's good point. Um, so, so uh, go yeah, ahead, let's mate. let's get into your uh, career in Boston. It's kind of kind of curious to hear about your uh, your experience there when you head down there. So, yeah. Uh, so, I, I was talking to like Kitchener, you know, major midget stuff like that, right? Playing here, and then uh, I got invited down to skate. Uh, I have no idea how they saw me. <laughs> Could not tell you that for my life. Um, got invited down, you know, practiced with them. Uh, I think two, three days. Um, they showed me around town. You know, I I live in Weymouth, Massachusetts. Um, played out of Hingham, Massachusetts. It was only like a ten minute drive to their rink, so real easy, real easy to get around probably 50 minutes outside the city. So it was real nice and go in the city, see that stuff, obviously, cause I'm from Ontario. We don't really get to see that stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, ended up offering me, a, they do like contract. It's not like a contract contract, as you know, like I was 16, right. I'm not going to sign a contract. <laughs> so it was just like play there, like that kind of thing. Um, lived with my billet, who is my coach, uh, oh. Rob Himberg, real good guy. Um, real busy guy, which also, motivated me to you know be more independent make my own food uh laundry all that stuff right and most 16 year olds like don't really get that experience away from home by yourself that kind of thing right um so in a life way it did help me and benefit me um which is like i'm very appreciative of it um and then the hockey aspect very different game huge like crazy crazy different all the americans they defensive they have structure my team offensively no structure they said once you cross the red line you do what you want that's it hmm. no chip chase fortune hmm. that kind of thing so it was a really weird transition especially like all like you guys growing up right here it's system 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 yeah um, that's cool so that was a big change for me um but the boys are really nice i got made fun of for everything i said um pop is soda um washroom is bathroom <laughs> um dressing room is locker room no way I, I, anything that came out of my mouth i got tripped for and i was like oh, okay so this is this is it um <laughs> that's but yeah like great experience uh wouldn't change it uh, i had a billet brother who was from nashville uh rye dukes real good guy um but yeah like got to see 
like we traveled a bunch we went to arizona uh i don't know why the boston boys thinks detroit is like unbelievable i i, <laughs> I they think detroit is like the best place to go like we went to detroit twice oh yeah like that for is ho- weird. like the city like for hockey like we were like our oh. L was like so bad like our team's so cheap like just right by the airport all night you hear the planes coming in and out like no sleep whatsoever so you know mm. like, we're going off pretty weird out in the states though like that's probably the best area of hockey michigan like little caesars and uh, detroit computer and stuff like that yeah there minnesota uh yeah, i guess I'm minnesota too but minnesota's like high school like they don't do the like the little like they don't do minor hockey really they do high school yeah but you see the kids that come out of that high school though like those yeah, programs yeah. are just as good as you know like the u16 tier one programs which is the top league in the states yeah that's cool though yeah that's interesting to hear how different it is i wouldn't expect that it'd be different yeah yeah super fast too like crazy fast really yeah so then, so then you yeah, came back interesting Oh, so then you came back to Stratty. I believe you played with our boy Macy too, right? Yep. 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 Mace, was, uh, Mace was my bet. Mace is coming on. He just is being annoying, but he's coming on. He's He said he's coming on. <laughs> I'll give him a chat. I'll give him a chat. Yeah, tell him to step it up. But so what was yeah. your time like in Stratford? Obviously, you came back. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, like first year of junior, you couldn't have asked for a better year, uh, especially with the dressing room we had. Um you know, we had that older core group. I think we had like six or seven 20 year olds. Um, so very welcoming to the rookies and uh, making practice fun and always wanting to come to the rink with a smile on your face. And uh, the fan system there is just so supportive. And everywhere you go, you know, you're kind of known. And, you know, when you're at the Allman at 7 p.m. on a Friday night, you're like nowhere else you want to be. So uh, it was a great experience and uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. Was there anyone that was really influential to you on that team? Influential? Uh, I like. There's a lot of guys on that team that were like, like literally. I can't say not one guy was not influential. That was just the bond we had in our room, and I think that's why we were so successful and how successful our year was. Um, just based on our dressing room, you know, like pushing each other in practice and never excluding anyone. Like we would always hang out outside of you know hockey and school and. After games, we'd just hang out because uh, we'd have Saturday morning practice. So we'd just hang out. But, yeah, like all the guys were really supportive and just made it very welcoming and felt oh, like home, right? Since Saturday morning practice? Yeah, that wasn't fun. Especially oh, my gosh. Like, that's terrible. What time was that? You know, I want to say like 10 or 11. Oh, that's... Like, you got to be there like an hour before, right? <laughs> so you got to wake up which is very tough, especially after a winning night. Cause, what, know, they didn't want you guys to party or something? Oh, the boys wanted to get rowdy after the games. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, the coaches didn't want you partying or like, what? I don't know, man. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> like, oh, man. That would us, even if they didn't want us partying, like, you know, it, it's how junior hockey works. You kind of just got to soak it and show up to practice, put in your two cents and get out of there. Yeah, jeez. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, yeah, it is what it is, though. You know, you get past it and move on. Yeah. So what mm. was uh, every Friday? How was, how was your barn? Like, pretty packed, I guess. So how was the mindset going in, every playing all the Friday games? Uh, yeah, like, it, obviously, it's a different experience, right, coming from uh, minor hockey and, uh, you know, like, playing in front of, like, you know, around, like, a 1,000 people a night. Like, it's, it's a lot. Cool. Like, yeah, that's, a lot, that's right? really cool. So it's cool and it like obviously the first few games you're like well you're still trying to like it's surreal to you, um, mm-hmm. but yeah like Barn was bumping all the time especially when I played like Listy or uh, Elmira or something like that was probably the most fans we've probably ever had so it was pretty cool and it, at times stressful because you have to perform but you know you, you play your best under pressure so yeah I just want to touch on that too is I remember like my first when I. Obviously, I didn't even play AAA, so I jumped right to junior C, and we started the season in Woodstock, and I was still, still goalless. I didn't score in preseason. Yeah, but I was I was playing like I was playing at the top, like I was playing minutes, like I needed to score. Yeah, and it was like first game in Woodstock, and I, I only played Double A, and there was like over a thousand people because it was it was Woodstock's home opener. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, well, this is pretty cool. 
breakaway first period, like missed the net. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, like, like stripped the D, like gone. I had the whole ice to think about it. No goal, it sucked. And then we yeah, lost like four nothing, right? Because it's like it's foreign to you, right? Like, like for anybody, like you, you don't expect to get a breakaway like ever in a game. Like it's not like you come into it. I game. don't know. I had a lot of breakaways this year. Like didn't like I probably had like ten or eleven breakaways over the course of the year. I scored one. You know, so I wish I had your luck, man. <laughs> hey, you gotta cheat. You gotta cheat more, man. Man, if I cheated, man. If I scored more, if I scored more on my breakaways, coach wouldn't get it to Matt, but you know, that's beside the point. Do you want to take the question? Yeah, well, uh, how was your short time in Georgetown afterwards? Uh, it was good. Uh, again, great Google guys. Um, knew uh, Nolan Dan going into that. Uh, so it was nice to know somebody, you know, made new friends. Mm. Uh, obviously, you know, hockey is a good sport where you can just meet people and just go along with it. Um, but yeah, it was cool. It was cool and, uh, good. Um, the league is very fast, very, you know, uh, body contact, they like high, high body contact, big difference from junior B to junior A. Um, but yeah, it was a cool experience. Uh, took a lot out of it. And, uh, yeah, even though it was a short time, I still had a lot of fun and, uh, appreciate everybody who was there. Awesome. Yeah. And then I guess you ended up in air and you and Matt kind of both experienced air a little bit. So Tell us about everything that happened there. Yeah, so again, Air, uh, Cody, real good guy. Uh, Mules will love him. I, I'm guessing Mules has already talked to him. Um, yeah, we practiced a bunch before Code Red happened. Oh, yeah, so absolute beauty. Like, guy, like, do anything for this guy, whatever you would say. Um, you know, like, just his coaching style and how, like, he would have that kind of, like, coach for his friend second kind of thing but like in practice you'd love to be around the guy you're excited to come to practice all that stuff um coming into you know like new team you obviously you get nervous um but yeah uh we ended up having a real good season uh obviously it didn't finish the way we wanted to um but wellesley is a good team and uh sad that you know the league didn't finish yeah that sucks it uh, got cut short yeah but now, oh, go on, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm good. You go. Okay, I'll cut that part out too. <laughs> but before this, I was wondering if you and Matt played together, but Matt told me you played against each other. So what was that like? Uh, it was, you know, it was tough because Mules, Mules works really hard. And, like, when he gets the puck, like, it's very hard to take it off him because he is a strong dude. Um, <laughs> Thanks, dude. He was very annoying to play against because, you know, like, he's always around the net and you just, you hate him. That's what I was wanting to hear. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I I don't think I gave Mules a jab ever. Um, I, I might have given No, we didn't really cross paths at all. I think I took you out once, that's it, but... Yeah, no, I mean, it's not that hard. I'm a, I'm a salt buck 60. <laughs> when I'm in wet clothes and stuff, but, you know, it's a little better. But, yeah, I love playing against Mules. We, always, I, we would talk a few times, but, you know, I was your head's in the game and you want to win, right? You want to beat each other, so. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we moved a little pointless. Yeah, yeah, Keith, you got to say it. You got. I put that in there for myself, but. <laughs> oh, you want to say it? Just say the whole thing, that's fine. <laughs> Mules, go, Mules going pointless in five games against you guys. I mean, the fact speaks for itself. Went uh, pointless every game against Eric. <laughs> obviously, uh, you know, we knew... As you can see, Mules is trade value. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> for air. Um, but yeah, like we obviously we play good defense. I, I love playing in a rink. I, I love playing in your rink, Mules. Like, love. Yeah, it. our rink's pretty good. We got good ice in there. Yeah, like it was like, I don't know why. It's just every time I would go to Paris, like I was just, I was super excited to play you guys. I, I thought we always had good battles. Like, you guys, the first two times we played you, I don't know if you're on the team yet even but the first two times we played you guys in air both times like i don't know i kind of psyched myself out because air was the big games for me right like all i got a bunch of friends from air and like my sisters have a bunch of friends from air so i had a lot of people like watching me yeah and we our goal our goalie hergy was done out that game so we our backup play and then he had a tough start penner great guy though but he had a tough start so you guys scored a couple weak goals like right off the bat and then, like, we got, then we had two injuries in the game, and we were already short. So we had like three lines under three lines, and we lost like 5 1. 
Yeah, and yeah. The game, same thing happened. Like literally, same thing. That's never happened. It didn't happen against any other teams. But then the last three games were pretty good, especially like the one I when I got jumped at the end of the game. Like I was. Oh, man, we got we got rowdy that game. I love that. Man, that was bad. That was probably the worst I ever got. It as he had me just like on the ice, just like. I was, oh, like, dude, I was. I don't know if it was that game, but I got fired up one game. Uh, I don't know if you were on, but I I came like down the wing or like the bench side, and I tried to cut in, and then like uh, Romani. I, I don't know. Is that his yeah, name? yeah, 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 Romani. I, I tried to sidestep him, and he like clipped my leg. I went oh. flying, and like, like your bench went wild. And then, like, yeah. I don't know who had to walk on the far side, but all I was doing was head hunting. And I, I like, I don't know why, but like, I just got so upset, and I was like, "Okay, hey, I'm, I'm just out here to get a penalty because I'm tired." And yeah, it wasn't good. No, yeah, like, we had some good games. But yeah, that's junior C, man. Like, that's that's how it is. Like, you get fired up, and oh yeah, we had a couple games that were just like not not even like I don't know. I think junior C gets like a lot of people, even that we have on the podcast. Junior C gets a way worse rap than it should. Oh yeah, and, like junior C is good. Like like everyone's like, oh, is there fights all the time? And I'm like, we had like six fights all year, probably maybe like maybe. Yeah. Like there isn't that much fights, but there's those games that just like are like everyone's so fired up. Like yeah. you got your like we were, we had a pretty good rivalry with Tavistock, and our games against Tav, you were nuts. Like. Yeah, but you have those games, right? Like ours was probably with Wellesley. Um, yeah, you know, you, you Wellesley guys, sucks to play. Oh yeah, especially hmm. in their barn, man. That thing's so small. Like, yeah, like, I got it, Keith and Nate. You guys probably haven't heard the story. Or maybe no, we haven't <laughs> had anyone on from Wellesley or anything. It's like Wellesley, but this team's like they're they're the biggest team easily, like in the league, and oh, they got like stocky guys on their team that are big. Oh yeah, and yeah. they like play, like they they know they're big, so they like they play super aggressively. Yeah, and like mm. first shift, I was like, I ah, like it was the first time we played them, and I, but I had felt confident enough. Like it was later in the year, so I'd already like found like found it a bit, right? So I go out like finishing checks first hit, like first shift, first shift, I buzz behind the net. Their D makes a pass. He makes a pass. Their team. I don't even, this guy's huge, so I don't hit him. I skate by him. He dummies me, like, sends me flying. <laughs> My stick went flying across the ice, oh, went knocked no. out of me. I skate by their bench, they're just, like, giving it to me. And I, like, uh, I didn't even go to hit him. He passed it and dummied me. I didn't even go to hit him. Man, like, funny, funny story, like, my, our second, or my second game in the league, like, our first game was against uh, yep. Burford, and you know, you know how Burford is. Um, so we, we played wellesley in their barn and i'm fired up right because like first yeah. first like real game and uh i'm like I, I pull some moves like in the slot whatever and the puck was in the corner and i'm like skating in the corner and obviously like somebody else is coming but like he's real low so i think this guy's like same set like size as me so i'm like sizing him up I'm, like okay whatever Next thing you know, my feet are off the ground. I'm gone onto the ice. And I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at what's happening. I get up, yeah. get back to the bench. I look back. It's, you know, number five, I don't know his last name, real big guy. I, uh, I pre- uh, it's probably the same guy who did that to me. Oh, yeah. I, I come back to the bench. I'm like, wow, welcome to the league. It's like, <laughs> yeah, well, that was my so real thing. Against. Oh yeah, it was it was horrible. That's funny. Like, funny yeah. you had a similar experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it That'd was be funny if it was the same guy. Oh yeah, it I'm, definitely was. Oh, what's his name? Like R- R- Rascot or something like that. Anderson, or no? Um, I'll find it right now. Wellesley or Castanet, or is that is that his last name? No, he is a he was a big guy, but it was. I think it was number. No, five. number five's my uh, McCutcheon. It says. Yeah, I think it was McCutcheon who lived my day out. I'm thinking of Ranson. Yeah, Ranson. He was an OA last year. He was huge. He's a big boy. He's 98. Yeah, we uh, we stay away from those guys, yeah. especially with my size. Yeah, that sucks. Like when you when you don't know who's beside you, like you don't know like how to size them up. I mean, you can get smoked. Like I've had a similar experience in football where you just get lit up. Like you're trying to make a play and you're just like, oh shoot, why did I do that? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're going confident, man. Like, yeah. you're like, okay, I got this. Like, whatever. This guy's the same size as me. I'm good. <laughs> Next thing, like, this guy just levels up. Like, I swear to God, I have no idea where these other, like, nine hands <laughs> came from. And I was like, oh, God, here we go. So, yeah. but it was oh, I know. got buzzing, right? So, got the yeah. end of the way. There you go. Yeah. So, we'll stay on the junior C topic, wrapping up. Like, what are you most excited for in Paris if the season ever gets started? Uh, obviously, like, you know, once the season starts, I want to meet the guys who are already on Paris. Um, 
kind of bond with them because I feel like I, I already got a bond with a bunch of the guys who are coming to Paris uh, with me from air. Um, that practices, I, I mean, like just being at the rank, right, man? Like I, I know Mules can back me up and like just being at the rank with the boys, like in the dressing room, and, like there's no other place you want to be, especially because you just, you know, you just talk. That's it. Like you, you don't, you don't even know what you're talking about sometimes. And it's just the best feeling in the world. And I don't think anybody else will get that if you don't play hockey. And obviously like football, like it's the same thing, right? Like oh, yeah, when you're sure. a guy in the dressing room, locker room, yeah. whatever you guys call it, I'm not going to get into that because we're probably wrong. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like just being there, you know, talking to coach, ripping on the goalies, goalies robbing you like that, like just joking around in practice, having a good time. That's yeah. probably what I'm most excited about. For sure, the social. Yeah, part of it. awesome. Thanks so much coming on. That was pretty fun. It's always we haven't had a junior C guy on in a long time, so yeah, that it was, was fun, fun to have someone on who can relate a little awesome. bit. We got, your team, we got a couple of teammates coming on soon. Yeah, I'm, I was pumped when you texted me, man. Like I was so excited. I was like, okay, like I haven't like seen other faces in probably like a month now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. I know. I enjoyed the most when we got like got boys that I played. It's I don't know. It's different when you played against or with people, like. Oh, yeah, because it was a bunch of fun. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me out, boys. Uh, yeah, it was nice really meeting you, for sure. Yeah, nice meeting you, boys.